the morning markets kick off with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Monday morning, 60 minutes to go until that opening bell. Let's see what we have going around in markets right now. Negative territory to start things off, but markets off the lows that we made last night. Right now, you're looking at an S&P. Negative by about 20 points, trading at 2801. That's a solid 30 to 35 points, though, off the lows that we made last night of 2771. For some context, when you back it up, just early, early Thursday, literally 1215 a.m. Thursday morning, 2965 in the S&Ps, we traded down to 2771. You're talking about 194 S&P points, basically over about 48 hours of trading, 6.54% for a pullback on that S&P. S and P. You know, we may be out of the woods for the worst of the worst, but volatility is here, folks. It is going nowhere fast when you get almost 7% moves in two days. And there really wasn't anything super drastic that caused that. Just volatility, uncertainty, uh, really tough to know what's going to happen in the future when um, that's based a lot on science and COVID-19 and the shutdown as the economy tries to open back up. The Dow right now, negative 189 points, trading 23,430. The lows last night, 23. 3,208, so you're about 225 points above that price level. NASDAQ 100 futures down about 45 points, 86.73. You made it as low as 85.56. You're talking about 120 points we've popped since the lows we made last night at about 9 p.m. Eastern time. Crude oil down 20 cents at 19.58. Crude, we'll see what happens this week. The last two, then quite the volatile sessions for crude. Gold contract up a bit, but off of the highs just in the last about, I mean, even that 20 minutes, gold just traded from 1720 down to 1707. We actually made it as high as 1726 early this morning. Silver basically unchanged at 1493. And let's pull up Bitcoin. Why not? Because quite the run it had last week as Bitcoin went from about 7800 to 9506, seemed to have settled now between about 8800 and 9000. Jumping over to the charts. Start things off with that gold contract. We covered that, 1725. Taking a look at the Euro US dollar from last week, end of the week, Friday, almost reaching 110. We're trading at about 109.37. In terms of what else we have happening across the market, big news hitting the wire this weekend with Warren Buffett and uh, Berkshire. They sold all their airline stocks. So Berkshire chairman and billionaire Warren Buffett said the conglomerate had sold the entirety of its position in the U.S. airline industry. The prior stake worth more than $4 billion included positions in United, American, Southwest and Delta. The world has changed for airlines and I don't know how it's changed and I hope it correct corrects itself in a reasonably prompt way. Uh, and to get over it, it's not surprising what may be happening, right? So United, there's your action on the open on United, right? You got action from about, this is last week's action, almost 27. You trade down $4 to 2306. Right now, your bid ask 2392 by 2393. Talk about a tight bid ask with 60 minutes to go until the market. I'm sure that United, the airline stocks in general, are going to have some volume today. Delta shares, pretty much the same across the board, was above $24. You spiked to $20.80. You're trading at $21.65. Southwest shares from above $29 to below $26 at one point. Uh, United shares from $27 to about $23.92 as the airline stocks get look to get hit this morning. Other news out there, J. Crew, they're going to be filing for bankruptcy. The clothing apparel company filed for bankruptcy Monday, marking the first major retail bankruptcy of the coronavirus pandemic. The company said reached a deal to convert $1.65 billion in debt to equity, uh, secured $400 million in financing from existing lenders to help fund operations through bankruptcy. 
it's going to be a tough one for retailers, especially folks. Uh, other action out there in terms of what we have going on. I'm going to jump right into some of the earnings reports we have going on this week. Disney, they're going to be out Tuesday, May 5th. Disney getting hit this morning as well. We're back to about 102, I think. There it is, 102. We were just at 114. You're talking about $12. I just went over what the S&P has done in terms of pulling back 6.5%. You have Disney down 10%. Some of the more volatile stocks that are being affected by these market swings. There's your example, folks, from 114 down to 102 on Disney. Disney out with their earnings after the bell tomorrow. We'll see where that shakes out. Roku out Thursday, May 7th. Checking out Roku shares ahead of the open this morning. Roku, quite the day on Friday from over 120 to 111. This morning, you're going to open a bit lower at 113.38. Shopify, talk about some volatility. I know we had some traders in the den Friday talking about Shopify, the action it had at the end of last week. Shopify reporting Wednesday, May 5th. Shopify, there you see the fall off and put it on a little bit of a longer 20 day hourly. Uh, quite the run, right? From Shopify up to 334, up to 668 just on Monday. You finish the week almost at 600. Shopify opening up positive right now at 625. They're out with their numbers Wednesday. Uber, that'll be one that gets looked to in terms of uh, May 7th, Thursday. So you got Disney Tuesday, Thursday, you got Uber. Uber shares, particularly volatile, down this morning as well. You look at the drop again from 32 down to 27.74. So at 32, you're talking about $3.20 would represent a 10% move. We're down about $4.26 from that price level. Huge moves in some of these stocks, but Taking in some context, you back it up to see the full swing of things. You had Uber down to 1371. That's when their CEO came out and said, listen, we, we plan on having about $4 billion, uh, even if business decreases by about 80% over the year. Market trades up, and we've kind of been hanging out between about 25 and 30, got above that level. But keep in mind, we're going to open at about 2753 this morning. So they're out with their earnings on Thursday. Beyond Meat. Out Tuesday as well, Beyond's had some recent volatility, as you've seen some of these meat processing plants shutting down, Beyond taking off, and there's your complete COVID-19 collapse from almost 130 down to 48. You make it back up to 116, and right now we're bid ass 89.50 by 89.99. Tyson shares, they have been hit particularly hard in terms of meat processing plants in general. There's your action this morning. So I think I have a Tyson article up here. Yes, I do. Uh, Tyson. Shares falling 7%. We just pulled it up. It's going to open at about 55.60. You closed at 60 bucks. Production disruption takes a toll on profits. Company secures $1.5 billion loan facility. I mean, that's going to be the key here, right? What companies are big enough to make sure that they can have the cash flow um, to, to get over the hump? They reported their fiscal second quarter net income fell 15% from a year ago. The company also said it has secured $1.5 billion uh, term loan facility. So shares of the Jimmy Dean owner fell 7%. Didn't realize they own Jimmy Dean as well. Uh, 77 cents a share, 10.89 billion. Second quarter net income, 364 million, or a dollar a share down from 426. Net sales rose 4.3%. Uh, this is all having to do with, though, they are facing some some tough tasks ahead with meat processing plants being shut down in general. Check out the volatility this is going through from 94 down to 42. We're gonna open back up at about 55. So there's some context where we're gonna open back up on the Tyson chart. Check in on the VIX as we get ready for the first break. VIX this morning, some closer action. We're gonna open about 39. We're about 40 at one point. Stay tuned folks, we'll be right back. See what else we have on tap for earnings this week. Payrolls on Friday. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476. 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We get the Dow right now trading 23,416. That's off about 189. S&P is off about 14 points right now, trading 2805. You see the highs we had at about 2.45 a.m. You're talking about 28.13 in those S&Ps. Jumping back to some stories of the day. In Japan, you have Japan's Abe extending state of emergency through the end of this month, May 31st. Abe will consider lifting the state of emergency without waiting for its May 31st expiration. If experts decide that it's possible based on detailed analysis of regional infection trends, he said at the start of the meeting of the government's coronavirus task force as the world looks to open back up. Uh, and what did I just have? There we go. So Florida as well today. They're going to reopen restaurants, retailers, restaurants uh, allowed to dine at 25 percent capacity with outside areas limited only by social distancing guidelines. Six feet apart for those tables. No parties of more than 10 people. Retailers also operating at 25 percent capacity. Uh, last week, you had Texas allowed to go back to the malls. Georgia at the end of the last month, the first one allowed businesses, including restaurants, movie theaters, hairstylists, massage therapists and tattoos two artists to resume operations. I just encourage you folks out there to um, be wise, be smart, and, uh, you know, just be careful out there still because the numbers, they're still there, and uh, we want to make sure we get rid of this thing. So whether you're wearing a mask out when you're uh, near people at all or possibly just making sure you wash those hands, don't touch that face. I know we're all trying to get that done. What else we have happening? Uh, I wanted to pull up the chart of some volatility, and it's back up here. So there's your action in the markets, right? We're looking at a VIX at about 40, and uh, pretty remarkable that out of the last, what are we talking about, six, eight, ten days, okay, we've only had two of those days with under a full percentage movement in the market. And what's interesting enough is that you've actually had four days of positive action when you had moves of greater than 1% and you had four days of negative action 
uh, on days that move more than 1%. And actually, out of the last 10 days, you've gotten more than a 2% move half of the time. Uh, so, you know, you almost want to say that we're out of the woods, right? I mean, the VIX would tell you we're out, we're out of the woods. You put this on a daily chart for some context. Talk about a slope down from 85 we're trading at 39. I mean, still, you could argue we're within the trend here. Uh, that recent high we had on April 21st, which correlates to the beginning of that chart I was just showing, that high on the VIX, 47.47. Other news items up there. And talking about the airlines, I just want to bring it back for Buffett in terms of what he did own in all of these airlines. As of December, Berkshire owned 42.5 million. That's a 10% stake in American. He had a 9.2% stake in Delta. 10.1% stake in Southwest and 7.6% stake in United Shares. And those stocks are down, respectively, 62.9%, 58.7%, 45.8%, and 69.7%. Staggering numbers, $4 billion investment, basically. And that number going to be down 60, 50, 70%, uh, depending on where they got out of those stocks. Jumping back to companies with earnings. So we cover Beyond. It's a big week in earnings following up last week. PayPal, they're out with their numbers May 6th. PayPal, P-Y-P-L. And of course, as I mentioned, we get non-farm payrolls on Friday for the month of April. That will be an exciting 8.30 a.m. number for sure. 12061 is where you close. We're basically trading flat on PayPal. We get their numbers, what we say, Thursday. Uh, Wednesday, excuse me. Square, similar action. So we get PayPal and Square talking about our people spending money. They're doing it electronically. Square shares, let's see how they have traded. I mean, remarkable bounce back, right? We've talked about it. Many of the hosts on TFNN, many analysts out there, in terms of the whole market got sold down here, and there were a lot of opportunities that potentially were there. They threw the baby out with the bathwater, and that was not necessarily the case. Look at Square. I mean, you're 100% for Square off of the lows of 32.33. Even from where we were on April 3rd, you had a low on Square of $42. And we're going to open a bit lower this morning with the market at about 61.60 on Square. So Regeneron, they're out Wednesday. Moderna, they're out Thursday. And Peloton, so Peloton's out on Wednesday. Peloton, Tom sent me an article. They, I mean, talk about being in a sweet spot. Everybody at home exercising, right? You see the fall off, really, uh, from February. This one, not as bad as most. We now eclipse just recently the high we had on December 2nd. That rises up to 3808. This morning, we're going to open a bit higher so far on Peloton. They had, I believe it was 23,000 people in one streaming class. Uh, now, here's the only thing I'll say about Peloton. It's ridiculously expensive to buy a bike. It's ridiculously expensive to subscribe to their classes. Realistically, talking about um, it's, it's a lot of money, and it's a very replicatable product in terms of exercise equipment's been around forever at the prices they're charging. I see no reason why a company out there, here's a business idea, go produce an electronic uh, bike, put a tablet on it, and then create an app that you can stream some instructors and you have the company Peloton. Along with a plethora of other things, they're perfectly positioned right now. So maybe they will uh, succeed and be around in the future, but they're out with their numbers this week. It'll be interesting to see what they have to say. I'm sure they're gonna have plenty of highlight reels from the numbers they're getting, the number of online classes as people uh, know going to gyms. I mean, talk about being in a sweet spot. They'll be out with their numbers Wednesday, May 6th. In terms of what else we have happening, so we get we got Monday this morning, uh, Tyson, and we get Shake Shack today as well, and Skyworks. Check out those stocks. Shake Shack, Shake Shack, in the news recently for taking some of that paycheck protection program loans and then giving it back. So are they out with their numbers already. No, after the market today, they'll be out with their numbers close to 5170. You're down a bit this morning with the market. And for some context where Shake Shack has been, tough spot to be in, of course, in the retail food service industry. You're up about 80 bucks. You trade down to 30. The rebound up to about 5170. One of the companies just jumping around makes me think of Chipotle. Um, staggering numbers for Chipotle actually rising. Same store sales in this environment. I mean, look at that run, right, from 940 to 415, more than cut in half, and now up more than $100, even from where we were trading at the beginning of April, going from 600 to 900, a 50% run for Chipotle Mexican Grill.
Other companies with earnings Tuesday, jumping through the, the list, Insight, Regeneron, Wayfair. Wayfair has come out and said that they've done some big things during this. Now talk about some volatility, folks. From 166 in June of last year, you start out this year at basically 110 you trade down to $21, and then you tell the world that you're crushing it because everyone's staying home, ordering online, and you're back to $122.50. I'd be very careful when you get a run from $22, March 20th, my birthday, up to $122. Speaking of stocks that have had an acceleration, Zoom, this morning, you're going to open higher on Zoom shares as well. Zoom up to 141. We were down at 131 pre-market on Friday. This stock with some volatility for sure. And check out that action. So Zoom was up at 181.50 as of April 24th. We're going to open about 141. Now, for some context, we were in this. I mean, check out this huge bar from March 23rd um, that we're in. Just a uh, ridiculous action over there on Zoom for sure. Checking in on what else we have going on, notes and bonds, 10-year note. I mean, there's there's your daily, right? You can really see we're, we're, we're up at these levels and we're hanging up at these levels in terms of 138.31. You're up about three ticks, but we've been kind of ticking along at these levels. I mean, look at that volatility we had when this erupted from March 9th all the way up to 140.24. Back down to 133, we're sitting at 138.31. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be coming back to finish up the program. We'll be back in three minutes. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, everybody. We get the S&P sitting at about 2802. Again, the lows that we had at early this morning of 530 at about 2783. So you're up a solid 20 points from that level, and you're up a solid 30 points from where we were at about 9 o'clock last night. I'm going to finish up the program with a little April jobs report action. Pretty amazing numbers that we'll be looking for on Friday. Economist surveyed by Bloomberg expect the U.S. to have lost. I had to read this one twice. 21.3 million jobs in April. Um, the fact that they even compare it to March down significantly from the 701,000 job losses in March. The unemployment rate is estimated to have surged to 16% from 4.4% in the prior month, just remarkable. The April employment report will show the most severe one month contraction ever, credit Swiss economist James Sweeney said in a note to clients April 30th, we expect headline payrolls to decline by 25 million, over 30 times the largest drop during the global financial crisis. This has all happened at once, it's never happened before. Unemployment rate should spike higher to a new post-war record. Now here's the part that I found cool as well to check out. Headline wage growth will appear positive, headline wage growth, but this is a statistical mirage caused by the rapid destruction of low wage jobs. Low wage jobs hit the hardest, not able to work from home. That's gonna account for them disappearing. Higher wage jobs gonna remain, gonna look like headline wage growth. Uh, that is just a result of all of those jobs getting destroyed in terms of on the lower side of things. But they also say one important thing to note, April's job report, um, that unemployment rate is likely to remain elevated in May, but when businesses reopen, it should fall sharply. That same gentleman said the recovery will be incomplete, but we do not expect double digit unemployment to persist for long. It's all uh, its all just speculation, folks. We will find out what happens. I thought it was a pretty cool take nonetheless, but uh, we will be looking for anywhere from 21.3, you see Credit Suisse out there at 25 million. I'm not sure if they're the biggest, but huge numbers on Friday as we await that non-farm payroll. And we get a lot of sweet earnings. In the meantime, VIX at 39.16. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesavento coming up with Trade What You See for the Market Open live from 9 till 10. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Tom. Live programming all day at TFNN. Have a great Monday. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his day daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire